Dear Mapless, dear guests and participants of the State of the Map 2019, my colleagues and me at the Ministry of Transport were pretty happy to have State of the Map 2019 taking place right in front of our home door. Because we, as a public institution, with a mission to organize traffic and transport in a better way. What is better? It's more sustainable, it's more secure, and it's some other things as well. We really much appreciate OpenStreetMap as a contribution to the digital world. We also use OpenStreetMap ourselves in um, our own use cases, in our daily work. Um, I will come to that later, but before, welcome to Baden-Württemberg, welcome to Heidelberg. Um, before I come to OpenStreetMap and the question why digital solutions in the field of mobility need openness and participation, let me first dive into mobility and say some things about the shifts and changes mobility is facing today. Welcome to Baden-Württemberg also means welcome to a place of the cornerstones of traditional mobility. Not far away from here in the city of Mannheim, it's like a 20 minutes drive or something, uh, both the automobile and um, the bicycle have been invented. The bicycle more than 200 years ago and back then still without pedals. Today you use stuff like that for um, kids, learning them, teaching them how to ride bikes. And especially if a car is still a part of the regional identity here in the southwest of Germany, which certainly has to do with a strong automotive industry around here with Mercedes-Benz, parts of Audi, Porsche, um, a company like Bosch sitting here in Baden-Württemberg. However, mobility today certainly is much more than just the car or the bicycle. Welcome to the mobility in Baden-Württemberg also means welcome to a diversified world where we have new forms of mobility, new services, um, new behaviors of mobility, especially in the urban areas. It is a mixture of different modes of transport and a mixture of both individual transport solutions, be it the car or the bicycle, and new forms of public transport like ride pooling, like ride sharing. And this new mobility includes great chances for better living quality, we think, and for more efficiency in the usage of our public infrastructure. And that can easily be illustrated when we take a closer look at, again, the car. This photograph here is a classic in the mobility debate. It's, I don't know when it was taken. It's probably when you take a look at the cars from the late 1970s, 1980s. And I don't think I have to say too much about it. It's just an illustration how many space cars need in cities and how few people are actually being transported with those cars. Look at the same amount of people and how much space a bus where they all can fit in or some bicycles use. And you see that also in, in, in figures and facts about the car. Three figures about the car, about car mobility in cities. 23 hours, 30%, 1.2 persons. The average car, your average car maybe, um, is being parked 23 hours of 24 hours a day. And this is basically the result. Yeah, that's, that's how it looks like. And in my own street where I live in Stuttgart, um, it's the same problem. 30%, up to 30% of uh, the inner city traffic with all the congestion, with all the traffic jams, with all the air pollution we have there is generated just by people looking for a parking place not even doing transport themselves, just looking where to park the car. Um, another number which I didn't put on here, the normal car has four seats, but only 1.2 persons are in average really occupying these seats uh, in the morning and in the evening traffic during rush hours. So what can new forms of mobility do about it? about this inefficiency. New mobility solutions like ride pooling and ride sharing, which are both things that are made possible at all by digitalizations, can increase efficiency, can increase occupancy rates, of course, of the cars. And it's the digitalization as well that really lowers the barriers um, to use public forms of transport, to uh, book a train, um, to, to take a bus, to find out how you get from here to your hotel by using public transport. But um, we are pretty clear about the fact that digitalization in mobility is something we need to work on. Another example is the autonomous driving, which is something that, something that is really highlighted in the debate, um, at least by um, actors out of, the, out of the private sector, out of the, out of the uh, industry. But um, with autonomous robocars and visions like that, 
you could easily um, even lower the occupancy rate of cars even further. Think about autonomous cars floating around freely and autonomously themselves, maybe because the guy owning that car just couldn't find a place to park. And you could have even below one person in average in the car. So digitalization doesn't necessarily make it better. And here we are right in the middle of the digitalization debate. Um, you all know about the fancy and shiny um, technological examples and use cases digitalization brings with itself. I'm personally a social scientist, I'm a political scientist, and so I'm especially interested in the social dimension about it. And you can easily see digitalization as something social. Digitalization is social as well because it changes uh, resources to act. It is a recalibration of societal powers. It brings in new actors and maybe kicks out old ones. Again, an example from traffic. This is the classical way how traffic management worked, how traffic management used to be. A public authority came along and set up a road sign like this saying, Heidelberg, go this way, or what is it, Schaffhausen in this case. And we are right in the middle of the transformation from traffic management to traffic self-management. Um, this is the way traffic management in cities basically looks today. People are driving around with their own little assistant, um, the smartphone, or it can be the onboard unit of a car as well. Um, it is more or less personalized, but who actually stands behind such a digital assistant? It's not the society, it's not a public institution that has the, the mission to act according to a public interest. It's the private sector. It's, it's suddenly the private sector influencing traffic management much more than it used to be. And companies, of course, have to act according to their own interests. They have to act according to their particular interests in order to take money and so on. And there's nothing bad about it. I mean, they, they, they have to do it. But, of course, the world is not that simple. It's not a question about black against white about good against evil. And there's much more than just the good public institutions on the other side and the innovative private economy digging in there on the other side. And of course, we know that um, the public institution like I work in can be really inefficient. And normally, we're not the first ones to pick up innovative ideas and new technologies. And on the other hand, private economy brings in new, really good new ideas that can do something about mobility problems. But um, there's much more, of course. There's the research and there's the civil society getting new possibilities to affect such, such crucial fields of action like mobility due to digitalization. And something like OpenStreetMap, a map made by everybody for everybody, is, well, barely conceivable without digital technology. In an open approach to digitalization like OSM is living it, barriers are low to use a service and it is easy to influence a service and to make something own out of it as well. The open approach, there are effects like the wisdom of the crowds, the participation of large groups that help to ensure quality, for example, and there's non-profit orientation in it. There's um, something like a public interest that gets in it as well. Or let me put it in an even bigger word, democracy. Don't have to say too much about it. Well, I hope it got already clear that we do not want to do digitalization because we think everything digital is better. We see digitalization as an element in sustainability and we see a digitalization that, that is made sustainable as a prerequisite for something else, for values like safety, like efficiency, labor and innovation, something that, if it's done in a good way, ensures fairness and availability for all. And therefore, sustainability and sustainable digitalization would be something that ensures future competitiveness and living quality. And it's not something that is against or opposite of an economical competitiveness. Um, one of the most important fields to act there is probably climate policy. One more number, 1,900,000 tons. That is the difference of uh, greenhouse gas emissions in um, the German transport sector between 2016 and 2017. And there's no good news about it, it's only bad news because the difference is positive. It's actually an increase. And 
if we want to get on the right track, if we want to live up to the goal of being climate neutrally in 2015, there's really a stony pass lying ahead of us and there are really intensive dimensions of change. This is a model calculation that shows what a lone bar in Württemberg what would have to do um, to live up to the goals in climate policy alone in the next uh, 10 years until 2030. It would mean doubling the amount of public transport compared to today. One in three cars must drive, would have to drive climate neutrally. Today it's below 1% of um, electronic vehicles in Baden-Württemberg. Every third ton in logistics uh, would have to be uh, transported climate neutrally. Half of all journeys would have to be done self-actively, so by foot and by bike, and in total we would need um, one-third fewer cars in towns and in cities. So, what does all this have to do with digitalization and with the open street map, and how can digital participation help us to shape better mobility and, more, and a more sustainable mobility? Let me emphasize two aspects again. Quality, innovation. First, we see the, the open and participatory approach of OSM as something like quality management. I, took, I talked about the wisdom of, crowd, of the crowds earlier, and we really believe in the idea that a map that is updated by thousands and thousands of mappers is something that is precise, something that is reliable, something that avoids mistakes. And second, making people to participate means to foster innovation, because the participation of entrepreneurs, research, large and small companies, and just the normal you and I give the chance for whole new ideas. Quality, precision, reliability, innovation, new ideas, all those are things we certainly need um, when we want to shape a better mobility for the future. I'd like to make a little cut at this point of the presentation and uh, dive into some of the use cases we have, but I need some help with that. So we have Dietmar around here, Dietmar Seifert. He's working for the Baden-Württemberg Transport Authority, and um, he's much better in explaining the technical stuff than, than I am. So here you go. <laughs> Hello, um, I have two use cases. Uh, one is from the LST. Uh, first example is a uh, Roadworks Information Systems, or short uh, BIS2, for in Germany, Baustellen Informationssystem 2, uh, which is currently developed by the Landesstelle für Straßentechnik. So you'll see the English uh, translations. OpenStreetMap data is not only used as a very up-to-date background map layer, but also to uh, easily enter rotable diversion recommendations during road constructions. To detect, conf to detect conflicts with roadworks and of third parties, all known locations of roadworks and constructions are mapped on the OpenStreetMap network. Map matching, so official classified road network with the OSM Street network, already provided many insights in the quality, uh, data quality issues. Both the constructions and deviation data, as well as detected quality issues and further data sets will be published as open data in the next months. For a few more details, come to the lightning talks tomorrow as a TBD. The second example is in the company I, I'm as an employee, uh, is a time information system, EVA, uh, BV. Uh, for electronische Fahrauskunft by the Nahverkehrsgesellschaft Baden-Württemberg. For this service, we collect the schedule and real-time data from trains and from buses from uh, our local uh, transport agencies, uh, collect the data together and offer a country-wide information systems to apps, to a website, and to the uh, public transport signs on the stops. One current project is based on a, a German... Uh, in, in, in the system, um, we use the OSM Way network uh, and important uh, point of interest for the searching and for routing from every start to every endpoint. Uh, the result will be shown uh, on the OSM related map until end of this year. One current project is based on a German law called Personenbeförderungsgesetz. It declares that local public transport must be usable for people with limited mobility 
possibilities as of beginning of 2022. Therefore, all train stations and bus stops must be evaluated how barrier-free usable uh, they are. In Bad Württemberg, we have uh, one, we have 1,100 stations and about 33 uh, bus stops. This uh, evaluation must be done by every country in Germany. The result in uh, Bad Württemberg will be input to the timetable information system to give the answer if and how a travel chain is usable for people with limited mobility possibilities. We will offer the results and the pictures. We uh, assume 500,000 pictures as open data sets for public use. At last, uh, I want to give you a very short information about our recently open data activities uh, during the last months. Uh, for our open data sets, we use a Germany data license with share alike and attribution but with an additional OSM clause to use it directly in OSM. For our open, um, we offer information about bus stops, train stations, with a lot of details, and uh, provide scheduled data in GTFS format. Okay, thank you, Dietmar. One of the biggest attempts we are currently undertaking is called uh, Mobi Data BW, Mobi Data Baden Württemberg. So in, in German we say BW for Baden Württemberg, and in English it's really complicated with a W in it. But nevertheless, Mobi Data BW is um, the vision to develop a single access point for mobility data. Right now we are quite good in integrating mobility data for the road sector on the one side on the one hand and the public transport sector including the trains on the other hand and in the road sector we're quite okay in providing open data and in the public sector we are slowly getting better at least and the vision of Mobi Data BW is to integrate both and to combine it with whole new mobility data. Not only to concentrate on the public side, on like ourselves, the data we have anyway, but to combine it with data from the private economy, for example, from the sharing sector with car sharing data, ride pooling, ride sharing, uh, bike sharing, e-scooter data, and so on and so forth. Um, we try to get started with that with uh, like, like um, partners that are willing to participate and try to get better and, and bigger. And we also combine this data um, with information from small and medium-sized cities. Because coming back to the example of traffic management, the way traffic management often works in smaller cities that are often enough highly affected by mobility problems, at least when they're closer to a bigger city where you have all the commuters coming in. Uh, so the way traffic management works there is often enough just to set up a road sign, going the digital way, because there are not at all the resources to really use digital technology with um, high-end modes of traffic influence like we have it in cities like Stuttgart, Heidelberg maybe, and uh, with Mobi Data. BW, we offer them a really uh, easy browser-based tool where they can um, digitalize their own ideas about traffic influence, about how people should get routing information according to um, ideas like less air pollution, more road safety, and so on. Um, on that platform basis, our goal is to provide both single data sets for um, use of third parties, but also providing uh, routing information that can then be used and integrated in other services. And um, yeah, the fact that OSM is the web basis of this is not the only participatory element, because of course we want to have as many partakers on the data giver basis, but we also want to have as many people, as many institutions as possible, actually doing something new, something innovative, making trial and error about better and new mobility with this data. So to put it in a nutshell, this is the attempt to build up a digital innovation ecosystem for sustainable mobility. A big attempt, and we're only getting started with that, but um, yeah, we're giving our best, and let's see who, where it leads us. Okay, one more thing. Uh, my boss, the Minister of Transport, uh, Winfried Hermann, can't be here today. Um, but um, this, uh, these ideas are something he really tries to live up to as well. And he really knows about these, uh, these things we're doing here. And so we go the digital way.
Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, the State of the Map Conference of 2019 takes place in Heidelberg, where the sharing of knowledge is part of the city's identity for more than 600 years. I'm pleased to support this event and would like to say a very warm welcome to all participants of the conference. The open availability and accessibility for the data created by citizen for citizens and a non-profit concept is a rare innovation base on which we need to build. Not only can OpenStreetMap be used as a navigation map, but also as a digital foundation for new and sustainable mobility services. This is one reason why OpenStreetMap data has already found its way into many of our own projects and services. OpenStreetMap has become an indispensable part of digital mobility. The Ministry of Transport, for example, uses this high quality data as a background in cycle path maps for a planning of construction sites and in the development of mobility platform based on the open data principle. In a world that is becoming more and more digital, the provision of data for the public is particularly important. The exchange of information is a cornerstone of a new mobility that is sustainable and ready for the future. I'm very sure that the state of the MAP 2019 will be an excellent exchange forum. Thank you very much. Good luck. So we'd like to end our presentation with a quote that pretty much, pretty much sums up why digital mobility should be open. It's by Niels Bohr, the Danish physicist. It says, the best weapon of dictatorship is secrecy, and the best weapon of democracy is openness. When we shape digitalization for a better world, OSM helps us not to forget this. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you for that talk about um, that talk about participation. Thank you. Um, we've got some time for some questions. If anyone is eager to ask um, these guys a question at all, got here. I'll give you my microphone. Thank you. That was a wonderful presentation. I found especially interesting your initiatives around making public data or data publicly available. Uh, the Open Data Initiative for um, public transport and road transport, et cetera, et cetera. My question is, to what extent do you share with other Bundesländer, with other states in, mm -hmm. in Germany, or perhaps even on a European Union level? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a mic here. Um, there is on the Bundes level, so on the, on the central state level, there is for the road data an own uh, data platform, which is called the Mobility Data Marketplace Germany, Mobilitätsdatenmarktplatz. So there the data is integrated already, and we also use that national platform for our own attempts like Mobidata BW because it's like, like doing a phone call with a, with a cell phone. We, we send up data there and take it back and integrate it and combine it in a new way for um, uh, for our use and for the public transport sector, maybe you would like to say some things about Delphi or stuff like that. Um, Delphi. Yeah, yeah. Um, Delphi is uh, looking uh, how rich. Uh, what, what is uh, we have? We have, we have law in uh, Germany. Uh, it is not very clear if they can uh, publish all the data because uh, the. Uh, countries uh, have the rights, but they make some modification and aggregation, and they think uh, they have the right to publish it uh, for their own. Uh, there is something happening in the background, but uh, if or if not, they publish uh, all uh, publish uh, all public transport companies uh, must uh, uh, offer the, uh, uh, the scheduled data uh, up to uh, the first of December this year. So. Uh, they need some popular formats, for example, GTFS, 
And uh, so uh, we have in the next few uh, years uh, some European laws uh, which uh, shows that a, a public uh, uh, public uh, public authority must uh, open the data. Yes, so sir. it is December, and in uh, two years, nearly all uh, data must be uh, open data by uh, default. Yeah, and with the public transport sector, we actually have the problem that the whole landscape is really heterogeneous. We have a, little, have a lot of um, transport associations and. Uh, on the law side, it's really complicated who actually has, has the right to, to open up that data. So that, that's certainly a barrier, yeah. yeah. Um, do you want to take the mic up there? No question. Or you just need to raise your voice. <laughs> um, thanks for the interesting presentation. I'm interested in how your collaboration with OpenStreetMap um, worked out in, uh, in practice, like, was there uh, any entities you were working with together, uh, part of the foundation, for example, or just uh, local chapters? Uh, and also, if you have any suggestions on how we can improve, like, uh, is there anything you're, you're missing in uh, working together with government agencies, etc.? cetera? Um, we uh, want to uh, communicate with the community. Uh, at this time, this is my part, but uh, we will uh, do it. Uh, we uh, will make. Uh, we will use it with more people. Um, we will do hackathons, and uh, it's very important for us that if we offer you uh, as a open data sets, that we will uh, get uh, back uh, the feedback. Uh, so at this time, we got a uh, very good feedback uh, how uh, the quality of our data is, and it is not really good because we collected from 22 local agencies, and uh, there is no high standard, quality standard uh, on the whole country. So this is uh, homework for us to uh, sh make sure that the quality will grow, uh, but uh, it's, we are very op uh, open for the Crit critic, and um, this is what personally uh, for me is important that we see what happens with the data and uh, what is uh, the value uh, of this uh, if you give it to the public. But we, like, around two years ago, we started to have a paradigm shift as a public institution from the classical way here's the data of the state, do with it whatever you want, to a participatory and collaborative way to do it. So we did first think tanks together with the community. We did a larger hackathon in 2018, I think it was, and we're planning a similar event for next year where we want to get together with expert teams from research, from civil society, provide them with resources and work with them together on the data. I have one addition. Um, what uh, would be important for the future is uh, how the uh, channel uh, between us uh, would uh, function on a, a detailed uh, information. If we uh, put out the uh, bus stop data, we have uh, 33,000 and we know that not every bus stop is in reality there where it should, where it is in our data and so uh, we want to uh, uh, create a website or some other or application uh, to give the OpenStreetMap or the other public community the possibility to say, uh, here is not a bus stop or it's, uh, the information we gave to the uh, public is not, act uh, is not so recently, uh, correctly. So uh, we need to uh, add some uh, apps also to communicate together and we want to use a uh, standard uh, mailing list or forum. Okay, I might accept one more question, if there is one. No, can we thank these guys again? Thank you for coming along and bringing the talk.